Okay, now once you have the components of the VAW vector, you square each one, add them up, square root it, you get the VAW. And that is your airspeed. That's how fast you're going in the air. That's the square root of that squared plus that squared. I wonder if it's going to be larger than 600 or is it going to be less than 600? Because your effective speed was 600. 632. 632. Point. So the airspeed is larger than the effective speed. So in other words, you're going to have to go faster than your effective speed at the end, which is going to be, uh, you're going to cover a distance of uh, 3,000 3, miles in uh, five hours. So your effective speed is 600 miles an hour, but you're going to have to go 630 miles an hour. Why is that? Air resistance, exactly. The air is resisting you. As a matter of fact, the air is doing two things. The downward component of the air is resisting you because you're trying to go up. The horizontal component of the air is actually aiding you. It, actually, the horizontal component of the wind is helping you. It's pushing you forward. But the downward component of the weight is uh, hindering you. So which one is it doing more of, hindering or aiding? It's uh, hindering more, right? Because the downward component is bigger than the horizontal. So that's the reason why the final answer is you get a bigger answer than, uh, than um, 600. If the wind's angle was more this way, uh, in other words, if it was more than 45 degrees, then it would help you more than hinder you, so the answer should be less than 600 then. Do you see why it helps to know what you're getting? What does it mean? Then you can check your answer, see if it makes sense. It's always, that's the thing that I emphasize, always see if it makes sense. Why is it 630? Is it, does it make sense that it's more than 600? Okay. How about the angle? Well, it needs to be greater than 42, right? Because it's pushing you down, so you need to uh, aim more than 42. Okay, so in order to get the angle, what do we do here? Inverse tangent. Yeah, y component over x component, and we get what? Forty-eight point. Okay, so it needs to be more than forty-two. So always, always, always see what you got. Does it make sense? A lot of times, people on the test they get answers, and then I ask myself, did they even think about their answer? Because the answer doesn't make sense at all. You know, if they had thought about their answer, they had read the problem right, they they would have double checked their answer. They would have realized something is wrong. You know. Like this one, if I had gotten an answer less than 42, then it was wrong, right? You've got to get an answer more than 42. Okay, how about the second part? In the second part, it asks, what if...